The reason scooters became so popular was on one thing, freedom. You can't really explain it to somebody who doesn't do it, you know, it's like, it's either in your blood or it's not. Skateboarding, I was sort of pro in the 70s, then the scooter and mod thing came back again and I was still skateboarding through all of that. Up here you've got uh, the J Adams Z Flex, which if anybody's seen Dogtown and Z Boys, they'll recognise that board. That is one of the very few left in the world that's actually undrilled from the original batch, the original mould. Generally the people that get into youth subcultures are the people that don't really fit into mainstream life and they're rebelling against something or whatever, so they pick up on whether it be punk rock, skateboarding, soul music, scootering, surfing, you know. Things that are cool. Things that are cool and different. Generally, you know, they're not like into team sports and mainstream and don't necessarily fit the pigeonhole of mainstream society. You know, they kind of want to do something a little bit outside the box. My first memory of scootering was my brother having a scooter in probably 68, sort of the start of the skinhead thing. Now you've got this uh, emergence of all the different generations. There's so there's like my older brothers that were kind of like late 60s mods and skinheads. So they're like in their mid to late 60s now. My generation, which was, <laughs> my generation, which was uh, late 70s, early 80s mods. Um, and then the, like the, the young kids that were into the rave scene, that built the rave scene, were probably 10, 12 when the mod thing was happening, but they looked at it and it was, they felt that was still part of their culture. And then now, they've all got scooters, you know? The mod thing came out of the, the modernist scene of the jazz clubs in the mid to late 50s, and taking a, a European look on suits and wearing Italian suits and a very, very clean, clinical kind of style. <clears throat> Obviously, the scooter lent itself to that style. It was Italian styling, totally different to the dirty kind of greasy rocker thing it was all about leather and kind of being that it's tough macho image you know the mods were kind of the headness of the day really they were out they wanted to look super sharp in fact I think somebody's quote I can't think of the guy's name was was uh, very good living under difficult circumstances uh, Pete Mead and clean living under difficult circumstances there you go. <clears throat> so basically it was your working class kid dressing as sharp as a nail spending 70% of his money on his suits his shirts his ties having this great wardrobe, wanting to look super sharp and way above his status, and then going out and clubbing at the weekends. It's always been a part of working class culture, really. Mine's a GP200. It's Indian, but restored to Italian specification. I've spent a bit of money having it painted and putting chrome bits on it, but living here by the sea, it's rusting ridiculously fast. Yeah, I'm kind of inventing a new category called uh, Glam Rat. So it's been, it's been glammed up and now it's going ratified. You've been inventing it, you are, you are it. So it's got the classic late 60s, early 70s design features that I really liked and it was kind of the brand new scoot when I was first looking at them and desiring them, so that's why I've got that one now. You see the sort of square headlamp and the side panels and stuff, it's kind of, it's a, it's a two-wheel version of a Capri, basically. That's the way I look at it. You know, it's kind of it's got the styling of the time, and also it's designed by the house of Bertoni, who designed Ferrari. So, yeah, quite proud of that. Mine's a um, SX150, uh, 1968 Italian. It's got a TV175 engine in it, so the inner workings just to give it a little, little bit more pull. It was a garden find. A mate of mine refurbished this for himself, uh, rebuilt in it and bolt restoration job. As soon as I went up there and I didn't have a scooter at the time, I saw it. Ended up twisting his arm and coming away on it. It's just the smell, the look, the feel. Um, it's just riding an Italian classic. It's 
just you can't really explain it to somebody who doesn't do it. You know, it's like it's either in your blood or it's not. Once it's there, it's there. You know, even if you don't own a scooter and you've had one in the past, you want one. You know, so it never goes away.